Hey everybody, this is Adam Broad of Liberation Arts Republic High, coming to you from the Voluntary Virtues Network, Episode 5. This just blows my mind that I've been able to get this far with this show. Uh, I haven't been able to stick around with a, a weekly show this long since I was, you know, doing Alex Jones Conspiracy Rants back in, uh, oh, probably 2012 or so, and I was doing weekly, uh, actually almost daily, uh, live streams with with several people that I was that I was really close with at the time. Good Lord. <laughs> you know, thank you, Michael, uh, for giving me this platform uh, and giving me the, the nice swift kick in the ass to get moving and seeing all you wonderful hosts, all you guys out there. Uh, even if I don't agree 100% with all of you guys that are on this network, just the excitement for liberty and the, the wanting to end the state and to adhere to the non-aggression principle, I just love. And it... And it it fills my heart with joy, it really does. I know it kind of sounds cliche and, and all that stuff, but it, it makes me happy to be a part of this network. Uh, also, I want to thank Michael for sending my second shirt. Uh, <laughs> he knows what happened, but, uh, you know, thank you. These shirts have become a nice talking point around town when I go out and about. Uh, the first time I wore one of these shirts out and I was just by myself, I got stopped, you know, 10 or 12 times and was asked about it. You know, I was initially asked if I was some kind of you know, far-right conservative who uh, hated Obama and was a racist or whatever. Uh, but I just told him, no, I just don't think people should be put in cages. I don't think that people should be aggressed upon. That simple. And your property should, is your property. You own yourself, you own your property. Done. Uh, on top of that, I want to thank all the wonderful people who I'm going to be uh, interacting with uh, and getting together with for some upcoming interviews, and I will promote that. Uh, right towards the end of this broadcast. Um, I want to kind of lead into a story here. So I, I had to get a brand new phone. I know, not a big deal. You know, what's the libertarian stuff behind this? Well, it, it, not really. I just need to vent, rant a little bit. Uh, my, my old phone, it's an LG Optimus G. Fantastic little device. Love it to death. Uh, my, my old phone, you know, same as that model. Screen broke. Touch screen. Completely inoperable. I, I broke it broke when it fell out of my pocket at work. This the screen shattered. So for those of you who know just a little bit about touch phones uh, and, and smartphones and stuff like that, you know there's something called a digitizer. Uh, now most phones like iPhones and Samsung phones and most of those phones, uh, you've got two layers of glass. The first layer, uh, you know, that's kind of closer to the phone, has the digitizer in it. That's what registers, you know, when you touch the damn thing. Uh, and then the second layer is a protective layer. That's why you see all these people with completely shattered iPhones that still work, and the, you know they're cutting their fingers every time they they play a game or slide their phone, you know, slide their finger across the phone, but it it still works. But with LG phones, and in specific uh, the LG Optimus G, there is only one layer of glass. Now people might you might think you know why why is it just one layer of glass? Well, it helps it be more responsive. You know, I can do little bitty touches and, and slides and and all kinds of fun stuff and get a lot more reaction and get a lot more uh, accuracy with my phone touches as opposed to you know my girlfriend's Samsung Galaxy uh, S3 or 4 whatever the hell it is uh, and definitely you know in compared to her iPad or her iPhone and all those wonderful devices um, so I had to spend the last couple of days you know getting a new phone getting the new one shipped in uh, so the problem with the old phone is that I can't get into it it's completely broken. The touchscreen system does not even work. So I have no way to get any of my contacts because over at the Sprint store, because I'm a Sprint customer, and I know AT&T has difficulty with this too, if you can't unlock your phone, they can't transfer data. So I kind of wanted to send a plea out to you guys. If you guys are so technologically inclined and so advanced that you know of programs on the computer that can help me transfer data, uh, from a phone that I have no access to the touch screen from, uh, you know, if it's a program that's 20 bucks or less even, let me know what it is. Now, uh, there is a thing that if you had your USB debugging thing on before the phone broke, then you could hack into it and, you know, plugging it into the computer, doing this program, that program, and, and mirror casting with, a, with an upside down backwards loop or whatever. Uh, anyways, I know there's a lot of you tech guys out there contact me please shoot me an email send me a comment uh, in the comment section below give me some tips sending me to places that you think can help because 
Well, I've got five contacts now out of the 112 that I need. And I know that might not seem like all that much. Some of you probably have four or five hundred contacts and, you know, oh my god, you should just have it all backed up on the computer. Well, you know, hindsight's so a wonderful bastard at 2020. You know, I, I should have had everything backed up, but I made the choice and the, I took the risk. And I'm paying for it. Uh, also, if you are so inclined and you wish to keep in, in phone contact with me, again, shoot me an email uh, or send me a personal message here on YouTube and or Facebook uh, or any of the other social media sites that you know I'm on. Uh, and we'll get in touch because I do want to create another networking of, of people in my phone that I can actually text and call on, on a regular basis uh, to talk about liberty, to organize shows, to do this, that, and the other thing. So uh, next on my, my list of things to talk about... Yeah, little bitty list. Not much to it. Um, I had a, I, just a wonderful conversation. Uh, you know, again, any of you who keeps track on my Facebook, on the Liberationist Republic High Facebook page, first of all, thank you, again, all of those who went and joined, and, you know, I'm now up to, like, what, 50 likes on Facebook? That was unheard of for me. I'm now up to, you know, a decent number of subscribers. I never would have imagined having any of that before this network. So, again, thank you, Michael, for the opportunity, and thank you all of you guys who are showing me support. Um, also, one last thank. I know, uh, Circle's working it again. Um, for all of those who, who interacted uh, and dropped comments on the last video that I did here, uh, it is just truly helpful when we get people who are curious about stuff about my guests and who just honestly want to get a, a question answered. That kind of interaction is something I want. That's something I need in order to help make this show as good as it can be for you guys, the viewers. Because I, I want a show that people can go, hey, you curious about this? Go listen to Adam. I, mean, I know there's plenty of people better than me. You know, Robert Kruger. We've got Michael Shanklin. Uh, you know, even uh, the libertarian kid, the guy who did Letters of Liberty, who's only got <laughs> one show under his belt, less than that even, really, depending on how you counted what he did. And speaking of which... I'm going to plug him real quick. Uh, he's writing at libertarian-kids at indianlibertarians.com. I'll put all that in the description bar below. You guys know who I'm talking about, the uh, the young 15-year-old, Anad. And I apologize, dude. I'm, I'm, I don't know how to say your last name. I'm not even going to try. And I probably just butchered your first name. Uh, but, you know, he's a absolutely spectacular. Reminds me of a, of a young uh, Tom Woods uh, mixed with a little bit of wit of Murray Rothbard. Check his stuff out. Please do yourself a favor. Uh, you will be amazed at what this kid can do. And he's also a Christian. Uh, he's got another website he's a part of. I'll drop that in the link in the links below. Uh, anyways, so you know, I, again, most of you guys know that I work at a hotel, and anybody who follows my Facebook page, you'll know that I posted a while ago, uh, a couple of days ago, that I just had another great, you know, multi-hour conversation with another guest during my overnight shift at my hotel. Well, it. I want to kind of elaborate on that, you know, kind of let you guys know what happened. Uh, this guest, you know, I don't know how the conversation got started. I know we were just kind of hanging out. We've got a little thing called a, a cupboard. Um, you know, our hotel, because we are extended stay and we have kitchens in our rooms, we don't have breakfast in the morning. We don't have any of that kind of stuff. We've got free coffee and we've got, you know, stuff in a little bitty shop that you can purchase. So he went in and he was drinking some coffee and, and eating some donuts. And I parked up next to him, just wanted to sit and chit chat because... Anybody who's worked overnight shifts at a business, uh, you know, a gas station, a hotel, anything like that, you know how boring it gets from like 1 a.m. till about 4 in the morning. It's just painstakingly boring unless you've got, you know, paperwork or stuff to do, which typically I do, but I had everything done already because I'd gone in a little bit early. So, so we sat down and, and you know, he got asking some questions and, and I started telling him about the non-aggression principle. I started telling him about, I, and I don't know exactly how it got on the topic. Um, you know, I asked him what he did. He was a farmer, um, you know, all kinds of fun stuff. Uh, he was involved with, with this EPA, USDA kind of stuff. I'm like, um, okay, why do you think that you should be using these systems? Oh, I don't. I just, uh, take, a, take advantage of their data, and I go and do it all by myself. And I, and we started just talking and talking about, about anarchism, about the free market, about how an unhampered, uh, free market and, you know, getting away from the state is truly more profitable. And and he, he started to open his eyes. And that's when I asked him the pivotal question, do you believe in what's called the non-aggression principle? And he looked at me, and this dude is mid-30s, 
and and he had never heard this in his life. I mean, this dude's a farmer. He's, I mean, he is honest with himself about how little he knows. He's not one of those guys who thinks, oh, farm subsidies, yes, I need money. How blurga blurga. No, he he just tries to earn what he can on the free market. That's just how he's always done things. That's what his understanding has always been. And he said, non-aggression principle. Well, uh, could you break that down for me? I said, well, you know, basically, don't initiate force. You know, I'm not going to punch you in the face. I'm not going to rape your wife, kill your dog. So long as you don't do the same for me. If you come and attack me, I have that full rights, you know, as, since I own myself as an individual, to take you down in whatever force I deem necessary to protect my life. So and we, we got into that, and he was like, interesting, interesting. And we said, well, but don't you think some government is needed? <clears throat> and I said, well, all right, let's break that down. Does the government violate the non-aggression principle? And he said, well, no, I don't think so. I said, look, all right, here's the deal. <laughs> they do violate the non-aggression principle. Here's how. How are they funded? Well, taxes. Are taxes voluntary? Are taxes any kind of... Uh, you give them money and you receive equal amount of, of services back? Well, no. What happens if you don't pay your taxes? Well, they come and beat down your door and take the money from you. Exactly. When you pay sales taxes, is that something you voluntarily choose to do? I mean, outside of the arbitrary, you know, you, you voluntarily, per, voluntarily purchase the item from a vendor and the, the sales tax is, is just thrown in. Um, and he said, well, no. So the government is working on, on, on theft, right? And he said, well, how so? Well, you know, again, they take our money because they think they have claim to it. They take our property because they think they have claim to it. And are they the ones that have actually done the work, done the labor, to earn whatever resources you've acquired? Well, no. And, I, and it opened his eyes a little bit. Now we got to talk about the military and all kinds of fun stuff. And then I even went so far as on my, <laughs> my old phone, not too long before I dropped it, I read the first chapter of Anatomy of the State by Murray Rothbard, one of the best and most scathing reviews um, of government that I've seen in a very, very long time. Um, and it, it's just spectacular. And as soon as he understood the concept that we are not the government, the government is not us, uh, and how they do truly violate the non-aggression principle, he was like, dude, I mean, this is the kind of guy, he, he gets super excited, and, and he was like, I've never heard about this before. Let me get my girlfriend or wife or whatever this, this lovely woman is to him. So he runs over to the down the hall, grabs her, and, you know, we, we sit outside for a couple of hours because, you know, again, nothing's happened that whole day. It, it's just so dull at the hotel at night. Uh, and we get talking about peaceful parenting, and we get talking about, uh, you know, non-aggression principle in regards to children, uh, schooling, and all that kind of fun stuff. And, it, again, it goes to show, I know I stressed this in my second episode, and this will probably become a recurring theme, uh, just open up about the non-aggression principle at least, if not anarchism and the free market in general, uh, to the people you interact with on a daily basis. You know, even if you're in a nine to five type job, uh, especially if you're in a in a customer service type setting like I am, or in retail, there's gonna be people who you can reach out to, uh, just using really really basic simple things. Now, there's plenty of you guys here on the network that can explain things far better than I can, uh, but I got so excited. I mean, it, it was just so fun to have this one-on-one -on -one dialogue with somebody who is an admitted statist, but wants to learn more. And it, it just made me so happy to the point where the very next morning he comes to me and said, Dude, I'm hooked. Uh, send me all the literature you can. Uh, I want to be part of this movement. Now, I'm not saying I'm any kind of great converter, because uh, I, I, I certainly can't do that. I'm not that great at, <laughs> at explaining things. But... You know, just the, the value of the non-aggression principle on its own merit. The fact that it is one of the most simplistic first principles that you'll ever run across. Uh, it, it makes it just super easy to take the next step. Uh, to the point where, you know, I mentioned he did say that anarchism is uh, principle is principle simplified or some kind of variation of that. And I got thinking about it. Well, yeah, when you simplify everything down to does it uh, violate the non-aggression principle, life becomes just so much more free. Uh, it, it just becomes liberating and so easy to do daily interactions. Uh, I know I, you know, this is something I talked with Randall Parker about. 
uh, on a on a recording that unfortunately none of you guys are ever going to see because the audio crashed, the video was all kinds of upside down and wonky and bullshitty. Um, but anyways, this this is just such a wonderful, wonderful opportunity. Uh, I urge everyone, any chance you get, you know, go to nonaggressionapparel.com, pick up a shirt, buy some bumper stickers, hand the stuff out, talk to people. If you've got books in your library that you know you've got some ebook copies or you know that you can go and wait a couple of months to purchase again, hand out your freaking books. You know, throw out, you know, give somebody uh, Against the State by Lou Rockwell like I did. Uh, you know, go and loan people the Complete Libertarian Forum uh, or, or Anatomy of the State or you know, maybe you know, anything by Hans Hoppe or uh, especially Rothbard, Stefan Molyneux, you know, support all that kind of stuff. Anytime you get a chance to be on a public setting and name drop any of these these wonderful people in, in the liberty movement, in the in the, the anarchist movement, do it. Uh, if you're not a complete asshole and be all like, oh my god, oh my god, you're a horrible person because you believe in the state. I know, I love doing that. It's so much fun now that I've Figured out I can do the blah, blah, blah. anyways. Uh, when people start to understand what the state is, for the most part, some of these people are going to change. You're not going to change the people who are dependent on welfare. It's it's going to be tough to reach them, if at all. Uh, so that's why I don't even bother with some of those types of people. But education really is key, and then getting them excited about it. You're getting them excited about the fact that you don't need government in your life. To tell you how to do what you need to do. So, that's just another fun story I wanted to share with you guys. Uh, let me know what you think. Um, is there any resources and, and, and quick websites and, uh, you know, better books uh, or little essays that you think would be better for, uh, you know, first-time people who don't have all that kind of knowledge? Um, you know, talk to me about it. Let me know what you think. Uh, drop it in the comments below. Uh, next, I want to talk about uh, the SEMO Drug Task Force. I live here in Cape Girardeau, Missouri, which is down kind of near the boot heel. Uh, for those of you who know where St. Louis, Missouri is, uh, we are about two hours south of that off of what's called Interstate 55. Uh, now, in the area, apparently, <laughs> I guess, and I, I, I shouldn't be naive and say that I've never seen gangs or I've never seen people who look like thugs in the area, uh, but we're in a predominantly uh, mid to upper class area comprised primarily of white folks, you know, down here in Missouri. It's just how it is. We've got a growing population of, of African Americans, uh, and we've got an even more growing uh, population of Asians. And we're a college town, so we're getting people from all walks of life. Great, fantastic, love it. Um, so the CMO Drug Task Force came in as a response to all this gang violence, all these drugs that are on the streets. Uh, and they really started off their operations on January 1st. You know, why not start the new year with uh, some extra tyranny? Why not? Let's do it, I guess, <laughs> is what their thought process was. So, what I found uh, is that well, what this drug task force is, is it's, it's made up of people from multiple counties. Uh, you know, different people. It's basically a committee of sorts. Uh, they bring in people from, like, five or six surrounding counties. And every weekend, you know, Friday, and then they, they finish up Sunday morning, Sunday night sometimes, depending on, you know, what kind of weekend it is, they go out and they... They hit different cities in the area. They never tell people where they're going to go. I mean, you wouldn't expect them to anyways. Uh, and they do these DUI checkpoints. Uh, they go and they patrol the streets even more. And they hammer down on just the most minor offenses. Uh, during their first month, or no, their first, their first weekend, they made uh, approximately 20 stop citations and arrests uh, combined. Uh, and of all of those, only about four or five of them were for actual violent offenses. Most of these people have records now because, you know, maybe they were a little bit of an asshole. Maybe they were, you know, kind of being loud and obnoxious. And maybe they were being unsafe, but they were doing something that was victimless. Which brings the whole point of no victim, no crime. I'm not just saying if you can hide the body really well, there's no crime. Well, I mean, I guess if you really did hide the body pretty well, uh, it'd be difficult to pin the crime on you. That's not the point. The point is, these people are exhibiting force and initiating force in a given geographical area to try to snuff out something that you know is important to to find a way to deal with. Uh, but we've seen a rash of shootings escalate here in the Southeast Missouri region. Uh, you know, this time a year ago, 
you know, yeah, we've had our shootings, we've had our murders, we've had our crime sprees and stuff like that. You know, we're not a perfect town, uh, and, and no one would ever expect it to be. There's been such an uptick in shootings and death and violence. I know what it can be attributed to. It's because of the pressure that the police task force puts in. You know, what, what happens is these gangs, they got comfortable in their respective areas. Uh, you know, they, they, they ran their little sections. Okay, fine, as long as they don't kill or hurt anybody. And <laughs> you know, that's all fine and good with me. And as long as they're not aggressing against somebody and they're just doing voluntary trade. You know, cool. You know, I personally wouldn't go out of my way to try to, you know, knock down some of these, these bigger thugs. It's not my thing. <laughs> I, I'm not stupid enough to try to put myself in harm's way like that. Uh, so anyways, uh, these people, uh, the, this drug task force goes from community to community and starts fleshing some of these people out. Uh, they've arrested a few people for, you know, legitimate violent charges. Uh, so great, get those thugs off the streets. You know, I'm, that's awesome. I shouldn't have to be on my taxpayer dollars. I would love to just send money to people uh, to lock these people up for a little bit until we can figure out exactly what they did and figure out a good recourse of action. Uh, anyways, because these police groups go from town to town over the course of a, of a month or a couple of days, it's causing these gangs to really get pressured on and to start to move. Uh, so what that's doing is that's creating more pockets of more intense violence. More crime is happening as a result of this task force. How much more obvious is it that the state is the real thugs? How obvious do you have to make it that that the real criminals, to begin with, start with the men who wear shiny badges? I mean, what more do you need? You see all these reports everywhere of more violent cops, of people using excessive force uh, in, in arrests, whether the people had it coming or not. Uh, you know, there, there is no reason for all of this violence at the hands of police departments. Uh, and the, these cops are escalating the violence here in the area. And, and some, of these some of these cops are just dumbfounded. Like, oh, I don't know. You know, we're cleaning up the streets. We're doing a good job. We're protecting the community. Why is there more killing? The world's just crazy. We need to, to look at, at doing different things about guns and, and, and this, that, and the other thing. And we need more checkpoints. We need, we need more cops, even though we can't afford it. No. What we need is we need a police force that actually goes and investigates crimes, you know, legitimate crimes, crimes that are against the non-aggression principle, and, and investigates them and, and, you know, whatever kind of justice happened. I don't know exactly how it would happen in an anarchist system. I know people have fleshed it out and you could be like, oh, Adam, you, you know kind of how it worked. Well, yeah, I, but <laughs> that's not my expertise. I, I'm more of a, a business type person, you know, give me retail, give me hospitality, give me, you know, a, an industry that I know a little bit about, uh, law enforcement or, or, or defense or uh, law, whatever. Not my forte, not my cup of tea, really. Uh, so I would urge you to take a look at just Google SEMO Drug Task Force or Southeast Missouri Drug Task Force uh, through any one of the, the government asshole sites. And you can see what uh, what these dicks and bitches in blue are really doing to the area. They're not helping anything. They're causing more harm. So uh, we're starting to wrap up the show now. I know it's been this will probably be one of my shorter shows, and I do apologize about that. Uh, you know, again with all the shenanigans with having to get a new phone uh, and, and having to take care of my girlfriend while she's had her wisdom teeth cut out and. And all that kind of fun stuff, it's really kind of put me back. I don't know, no excuse, I should have content preloaded. Anyways, a couple of things I wanted to promote to you guys. On July 12th, that's this coming Saturday morning, I will be doing an interview with uh, Narigamba Mwinsubo. I, I'm completely butchering that name. Uh, and there's another gentleman, I don't recall his name offhand, uh, they work with Students for Liberty out of Ghana. I'm going to do an interview with them uh, that will hopefully air for next week's show. Uh, in fact, I plan on it to be for next week's show, uh, depending on how things shake out. Um, and just just to get to know them. Uh, we've also got uh, Michael Dan Rao. And again, I'm sorry, I'm completely butchering your name. Uh, let me know how to pronounce it again later. Um, he's also doing another interview with him on the 21st. So please check out both of these videos. I plan to get kind of more into their, their history, how they got to where they are, and whatever issues they deem important for themselves or you know if there's some causes that they want us to support uh, we're gonna I'm gonna give them the platform with which to to air all that out uh, and then 
I know Michael is going to go and uh, kind of focus more on the activism and more of some of their projects, get into more specifics. I'd like to kind of go mile-wide inch deep as opposed to, you know, digging all the way to the center of one object. Uh, I've also got John Payne of Show Me Cannabis. I'm going to be doing an interview with him on July 15th. I plan to air that the following week, uh, assuming all things go well. Uh, the Show Me Cannabis Institute is uh, something here in Missouri, uh, based out of St. Louis, that is, you know, trying to push for decriminalization and legalization uh, of primarily marijuana and cannabis, but also they're trying to just end the drug war here in Missouri. Uh, now, yes, they are taking a lot more political action, which I know how a lot of you guys feel about that, but, you know, if, if we're going to have a chance to start taking down the state, we got to, you know, we got to do something like this. We got to get uh, the state to start to realize that some of the things that they're doing is, is really, really, really bad, uh, and then we can go ahead and start convincing people, well, hey, you know, we saw what happened when we released the government chains on this sector or that sector. Uh, so we'll, we'll see what happens. Uh, but he is he is a Ralph Bardian. He has been published in the Journal for Libertarian Studies. Um, I think it was Libertarian Studies. Yeah, it was. Um, the dude's an anti-statist uh, to the core. Uh, and I, I'm really excited to see what this, this conversation brings. If any of you Voluntary Virtues Network listeners, viewers, or hosts are in the St. Louis area on the 15th, please email me, Facebook me, reach out to me, shoot me a call. Um, if you have ways to find my phone number, which is on my Facebook page, uh, you can find that. Um, anyways, reach out to me so we can kind of do a tag team. I am more than happy to kind of co-brand an interview, uh, anything like that. And if you've got questions for John Payne or Nari Gamba, Mwensubo, or the basically the Students for Liberty uh, panel uh, from Ghana, let me know. I want to be able to ask some questions on behalf of you guys. And I know Michael, uh, Dan Rao, however you say this, I'm, again, I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. <laughs> I'll get it one of these days. Uh, reach out to both of us. Ask us questions to ask them. And, you know, we'll be more than happy to do that for you. Finally, uh, I want to promote uh, my channel, uh, Liberation Honest Republic High, on, uh, on YouTube here. You always see that in the comments below. I've got a new show, uh, a new series called The Voluntary Virtues Spotlight, where I want to reach out to any host here, any of you guys. Uh, even those who I may disagree with, uh, who none of you know who you are yet, uh, but I may have to start doing response videos to some things at some point if I feel the need to, if other people aren't already jumping on it for me. Uh, you know, I want to get I want to get your story. I want to get stuff that matters to you. I don't want you to just have your your scripted, uh, you know, weekly show or you know your off the cuff weekly show for your whatever's hot topic of the week or what to hot topic of the day. I want to get who you are and what what brought you to this point and it'd be on my personal channel it's you know there's no deadlines there's no time limits it's just however long you want to put it into an interview reach out to me I want to tell your story uh, I've already told the story of uh, of Chuck for the Liberty Geek a little bit I know we're probably gonna have a part two on that to kind of dig deeper uh, into his political history and his his theories on things so that's youtube.com slash liberate the republic uh, and that's the show, Voluntary Virtue Spotlight. Again, reach out to me, shoot me a comment in the comment section below, and we will touch base with each other. Uh, again, thank you, Michael Shanklin, for this opportunity. Thanks again for the shirt. Go support nonaggressionapparel.com. Uh, Go buy some stuff. Uh, Michael was so wonderful to me. He sent me extra bumper stickers and uh, all kinds of fun extra stuff that I've been able to hand out to people and, and really make an impact in the region. Uh, go to VoluntaryVirtuesNetwork.com, and that is a wonderful conglomerated site uh, that Michael has been putting together. It's got an archive of all the videos, which obviously you can see here on YouTube. Uh, it's got some articles that are popped up, uh, and he's just expanding that site. as just a central hub uh, for what it is that we want to talk about. Uh, so go check that out. Um, you know, if there's anything else I've missed, I'm sorry. Uh, you know, let me know what you want to hear for the next show. Uh, shoot me some tips, some show tips, some uh, if you want to come on the show for next week. Uh, or a couple of weeks from now, or, you know, I do pre-recordings primarily, and we can we can figure that all out. If you've got something that you really want to talk about, let me know. We'll arrange an interview, and we will get that going. Uh, so this is Adam Broad of Liberty Sons Republic High saying peace and love and liberty.